Okay, I haven't been doing any new videos for over a year. Okay, let's do one now. Growing startup and I'm a speed learning guru. I'm from We Found Incorporated. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. And today we'll be talking about the Hackintosh. Yeah, a lot of people still think that it's something illegal, but if you know the legality behind this thing, then you won't be getting into any legal troubles. So, let's cover these, and let's also cover the companies which actually violated these laws. And, first of all, let's talk about the way how Hackintosh actually works. So, before we're gonna do that, don't forget to put a like, grab a link and share it with your friends, and follow our channel. So now, let's buckle in. It's how it works, but we from Incorporated. Oh yeah. A brand new release. Let's talk about Hackintosh. Oh. So, what is a Hackintosh? To keep it simple, Hackintosh is a portmanteau of Hack and Macintosh. Since Apple's macOS system software is made to run only on Macs, there is a solution made for other computers, Intel-based computers, so you can install macOS on them. For example, the OpenCore Legacy Badger. There are two some really popular apps to do this right now. The iBoot and the Open Core. Yeah, those are cool guys. Here's one really interesting feature in both of the apps. So just to look at this feature more exactly, we need to look in the way how the macOS is actually designed. Well, if you may remember one of my episodes where I've been talking about the macOS subsystems, you may remember me saying about the boot picker. Well, the boot picker is kind of the destination selector inside the macOS. Well, you can't say, hey, Peter, Windows computers also have this, but you kind of need to access this in a really hard way. And yeah, you cannot just select the one time boot twice. So in macOS, on any Mac computer, you can hold an Alt key just to get the list of all the drives you can boot from which is a pretty handy dandy feature. Yeah, you can change the default drive to boot from in macOS system preferences, but you can also select the one-time bootable device just using this boot picker feature. So Open Core and iBoot create an easy way to manage among your Windows software and macOS software. So sometimes Hackintosh means just installing macOS, sometimes Hackintosh means installing macOS on top of the existing Windows or Ubuntu OS. So after that, you'll be having some kind of a boot picker inside your computer when you're booting off, so you can select which drive you want to boot from. Moving on, it's time to say that Hackintosh is a little hard to be made for not tech savvy people. And sometimes people offer some paid services to make Hackintoshes. If you're making some commercial Hackintoshes, oh yeah, that's where we're getting into big trouble. Well, while we're at that topic, Let's talk about PsyStar, an open core computer. By the way, the open core computer isn't connected in any way with the open core legacy badger. Yeah, they simply stole the branding shamelessly. That's it. We're gonna stand with open core as long as we can and as long as we breathe. Well, here's what both of these companies did. They sold the Hackintoshes they did. You may say, okay, Peter, there are a lot of people who make Hackintoshes privately. Well, they do that privately and the business these guys are making is not really competitive to Apple. But these companies, yeah, they were having some big revenue, yeah? So I watched some videos among you about PsyStar and yeah, there were some cringy ad solutions. Yeah, so I, uh, I got a new Mac. Oh, nice. How much did I cost you? It was pretty steep, like three grand. Ouch. Well, it's about a PsyStar open computer. Costs half as much as your Mac. And with better specs, too. In fact, I've made a presentation to show you how much money you could have saved. With the $1,500 you spent on your fancy Mac, you could have had 800 beers. Well, the only place where this ad would have potentially worked out is Germany. Namely, München Biergarten. Yeah, just show this ad to beer lovers there and you'll get possibly some revenue unless these people have already their Macs, have already their software and they're happy with their Mac computers. Oh, let's continue with the episode. The PsyStar and OpenCore both violated one single law. They sold the commercial Hackintoshes. 
Well, the way they worked is a little different. For example, PsyStar took the existing computers from people, made some hacking touch modification, and sold these computers back. In case of OpenCore, they're building a fully personal computer based on the Leon Lee T50 case, and they already installed some Hackintosh using the OpenCore bootloader. Yeah, although these companies are like 10 years apart from each other, they're kind of following the same guideline. So both of these companies have been shut down by Apple and both of these companies are vanished. I don't know what happened exactly because I couldn't get my hands on the official lawsuit documents, but as far as I could found, I could not find not the website of the OpenCore, nor the website of the Sistar. Now, moving on to the topic of a Hackintosh, here's the question. Peter, why doesn't Apple allow people to make Hackintoshes? Well, here's quite of an answer. They kind of broke financially doing that. Well, back in the days when Steve Jobs was not at Apple, the Windows 95 was raising its success. And to be honest, the ability to install this Windows 95 on different computers was a pretty big deal, you know? And a lot of people bought this thing because you can install it pretty anywhere. But the Mac OS was made only to run on Apple's computers. So that's when Apple started to distribute their Mac OS system software, license, ROMs, and the software itself to Mac vendors. Here's what happened. When Steve Jobs got back to Apple, he realized that Apple was gonna go broke with this project. Yeah, and he has thrown the Mac clone project into the fire pit because originally he kind of started to increase price for the Mac product, for the Mac OS system software, for these Mac clone vendors. And later, Apple still didn't have any financial solution for this thing, so yeah, Apple fully shut down these companies. And as we see right now, it's just a quite a better way for Apple. In fact, it's also worth noting that Steve Jobs made some financial reformations among the Apple, namely, he fully changed the ideology behind Apple's product strategy. Steve Jobs eliminated the four main products, including the desktop and the portable computers, both for low-end users and pro users. But that's the story for another episode. For now, let's move on with the episode. Heck, even if Apple will start this now, it won't be really any good now because the Mac have their specific architecture, the Mac have their specific features, some unique features, for example, sidecar, universal control, or continuity camera, or for example, even airdrop. So making Mac clones right now is kind of awkward. But anyway, if you want to do a hack and touch, do it, but don't sell it. Thank you for watching this episode. My name is Peter Wigwern. You're on Wii from the Incorporated YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to visit our refined website, our Wim Help portal, where you can get help with your very own hardware, more importantly, Mac hardware and iOS system software. And also don't forget to visit our Instagram and TikTok pages. There we upload reels. Yeah, the one minute format reels which will possibly fit to everybody. So now it's it for the day. I really like sticking it with you. So don't forget to follow and see you next time. Slavo Ukraine.